They make it to the top, but don't have time to catch their breath. The only thing harder than getting to the top of Adigan Pass is coming down the other side. Hold this thing back, right? Oh, I will. Hold her down. Yep. I'll let it speed up. I've lost my need for speed suddenly. On these steep, icy downhills, brakes are practically useless. Downshifting is the only way to maintain control. But if you don't shift fast enough, the truck can pick up so much speed that it will be impossible to get it into any gear. This is not good. And you've got an 80,000-pound runaway truck on your hands. So we're going to have to slow down. I am. Hey, come on, put your clutch in. I thought we were in gear. Amy tries to downshift, but accidentally leaves it in neutral. And now the truck is picking up speed out of gear. Put your clutch in. She's shooting for fifth gear, but no luck. Now she tries sixth gear. Momentum is adding speed. She's got to try for seventh now. She finally locks it in seventh. Amy's instructor, Roy, is sorry, not pleased. Do not, do not pull us out of gear. Okay. Unless I tell you to. Okay. You will kill us all. Okay. All right. When you get on these steep grades, you will not be able to get it back in gear. Okay. It will not let you get a grip. That's scary. You... All right. I'm scared now. Okay, Six wait, gear. I'm going over here. Six gear. You're in seven. The rookies survived Attigan Pass and now have 100 miles to Dead Horse. But the Arctic storm catches up with them. High winds, fog, and blowing snow surround the convoy, and the roads are treacherous with invisible black ice. Alaska becomes an endless Arctic wilderness. School teacher Sandy is one of only a few truckers who appear comfortable behind the wheel. I'm getting the way. As a woman, I've picked it up because I'm sensitive. I can feel the gears. I know when to clutch it in and clutch it out and all that. Romel's poking and cramming. I mean, like most men, poke and cram. Got their eyes closed and waiting for they, so they can find the right spot. Getting all the love. Phil, too, is unfazed by the bad weather, and his instructor, Tim, takes notice. I don't say this very often, Phil, so listen up, all right? If I was hiring drivers like I have before, I wouldn't hesitate at all to hire you. I'd put you in a truck and I'd need you instead of riding beside you. I, I really appreciate that. Tim could choose to keep Phil in the seat and coast into Dead Horse. But he decides to give Chris one last shot as a trucker. It's all you, man. It's all you. Take your time. Starting out, his driving seems under control. Unfortunately, his mouth isn't. The problems I had when I was originally driving before I got tossed to the curb, it was uh, just downshifting. When it comes to doing it, I seem like I'm choking. That's not really what you got. Got you, as you said, thrown to the curb, though. What got you canned was you couldn't get it started without the truck jumping up and down, and it won't take that. Right, but it didn't go happen a second time. But you're right. No, you're right, 100%. This, this, this means yeah, somewhere I'm to... telling you where was I know. that for me. I said that's fine. You know something? I, I, I thought that you were kind of harsh on me. You're not going to have an opinion about that. Well, right? I tell you, I'm a little bit pissed that you spent the whole day sleeping back there. I mean, we go up over the pass, the places, all of the places that you should have been looking to learn, and what you're doing is sitting there with your stocking cap pulled down over your face. You can't even read my mind and say, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm like, you know what? Screw yeah, this. I don't have to read your mind. It comes right out of your mouth. Okay, look, you know what? Why don't you stop being a belligerent ass and just be, be just, just stop talking about yesterday and yesterday and yesterday. I don't well, get it. because this is my truck and I can control the conversation you, if I want you to. You control it, but then I don't have to answer you. I won't listen to you. Well, then don't. I'm not going to. Stop the truck. You got it, brother. Out the door. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Or I will, I will. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> I 
don't have to read in your mind, it comes right out of your mouth. Okay, look, you know what? Why don't you stop being a belligerent ass and just stop the truck? Out the door. Thank you very much. Lesson number one for Chris. Never call the boss belligerent. Move on. All right, I will. I will. Enjoy yourself. He's been given the boot from the truck in 20-degree weather. Just start from here. No, we're going to end from here. Okay. Chris was behind the wheel and driving. Mm -hmm. Performance-wise, you just said enough's enough? But then he started with the name calling, and that ain't happening in my truck. I don't call you any names. You're, you're a liar. You're, he's a, wait, wait, hold on. The man's laughing at me now. I'm not laughing at you. I like you. Disrespecting me in my own truck ain't happening. You don't want him back in that truck with you? No, I don't. So we will take Chris. Sorry this happened to happen. Take care. I just don't need that. After driving 500 grueling miles and climbing 4,800 feet to the top of a mountain, our rookies can finally see the end of the road. Look! <laughs> That is dead horse. I thought you said there was a mall here. I said a guy got mauled. Oh, a guy got mauled right there. <laughs> Dude! Nailed it! We did it! Double <laughs> Oh, yeah! Hey, truckers! <laughs> Welcome to Dead Horse. <laughs> we are in Dead Horse, Alaska, the coldest place on earth. I'm yeah. glad that we got here. All in one piece, nothing got broken, except maybe some egos. While our truckers celebrate their long journey, Fred and his instructors decide who didn't perform and will wind up in the bottom four. As far as the bottom four goes, this is a really tough one because I couldn't really see. I know our buddy Chris was uh, kicked right out of the driver's seat, so he's probably a shoe in OK, you guys trucked 500 of the hardest miles on Earth, the Dalton Highway. And you did it safely, you did it on time, and you brought in your load. Woo! Good job. Oh, yeah. 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 Let me remind you guys what you're working toward. The combined salaries of all the jobs. Brought to you by the all-new Dodge Ram 1500. We're going to add to the pot the salary of a first-year trucker. About $32,000. All right. Now, your supervisors watched you very closely, and they reported back to Fred who could get it done and who couldn't. Fred, who was the best? Phil. Phil's displayed all the natural bond skills of a truck. Driving a truck would definitely interest me. Yeah, an office with a window. It could be a potential career change for me. Sandy, who do you think was the worst? I'd have to say Chris. His attitude sucks. You know, he's going to tell the boss man, I'm going to have to think about taking a second opportunity. What kind of employee are you when you're going, I'll let you know if I'm going to work. That's just bull <laughs> Lee, other than Chris, who should be in the bottom four? Man, you guys put me on the spot, and I, I hate to do, I hate it to do it, but only because I was in the cab with Amy, and even though she's my partner, our supervisor was ready to pull her out because she kept dropping the gears when we were going uphill. Once she made that comment, I was pretty shocked. I was furious. All right, now the tough part. Fred, who was in the bottom four? Chris. Bryce. And I was actually surprised because I didn't think our, our driving was that bad. You need to get a downshift now. Make a downshift. Third person was Romel. <laughs> Can't do that. Who's the last in the bottom four? Amy. Please, John. Oh, my God, please. <laughs> oh, God. Drama. You can stab me in the back. You can do whatever you want. But, like, don't come over and try and hug me afterward. It's just like, whoa. Uh...
I was shocked that Lie called me out. Last night, she pulled me aside and said, I mean, you had the tough roads, the tough visibility, and I had the basic stuff. She was trying. That's what I'm going to give to Amy. Roy kept telling her stuff, and it was just going in one ear and out the other. Come on, put your clutch in. I thought we were in gear. You're not thinking. It's disappointing, but that's who people are. If she can live with herself that way, great. And I live with myself my way, and we go our separate ways. OK. You are the bottom four. You have one more chance to prove you have enough skill and toughness to stay in this competition. Here is the job. First, line up the trailer and back it into the loading dock. You can use the orange cones as a guide, but if you hit one, there's a one minute penalty. Then to detach the load, lower the landing gear, uncouple the hydraulics, and pull the locking pin to release the trailer. If you don't line up your trailer straight, there will be more resistance on the pin, and it's gonna be harder to pull out. Once the trailer is successfully detached, cross the finish line to stop your time. The person with the slowest time will go home. Bryce, you're up first. All right, Doug, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Go! I'm not going home. I believe I'm gonna take this straight to the end. Rice is positioned nicely to back up his trailer. You're trying to fight the logic when you're doing this because you think it's going one way, and you look in your mirror, it's like, why isn't it going the way I'm turning it? So you got to kind of turn right to turn left. Oh, this way, this way, this way. Rice is way off target. He's going to have to start over and line it up again. I can't see it. All right, one more time, Bryce. Let's do this. He hits it on the second try. Bryce has lined up right for the dock. Oh, he's going to count. He's going to count. Hold up. Come on, Bryce. Come on, Bryce. Make some time. Crank it. He's detached the hydraulics. All he has to do now is release the locking pin on the trailer. There we go. Oh, yeah! Yeah! Right, yeah. 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 All right, he's in. I don't think I did as well as I wanted to. I'm gonna say I'm nervous. Hopefully, they do worse than I did. Next up, Romel. I didn't have much opportunity to, to practice backing up the truck. I mean, I, I don't even back up my car. I'm going to focus and just get, get the job done. Keep going. Keep going. There you go, baby. Keep going. Romel nails it on the first try. He's got a huge lead on Bryce at this point. He's got a great time. Man. One shot. Yeah. There go the hydraulics. With Ramel's stellar time, Bryce knows he's in the hot seat. Bottom four. In this situation, it's either go big or go home. So I'm thinking, damn it, I'm finna fall. But now Chris is up to save himself from elimination. Go! We're backing that truck up and only having just a minimal experience, only two times of practice doing that. I mean, the pressure's on. When you're under the clock, it's not easy because you start making mistakes. Take two. Chris's lack of time in the driver's seat is affecting his ability to handle the rig. He's switching mirrors while he's backing up, causing him to get confused on which way to aim the trailer. 
making him miss Sadak. Again. And again. I have lost count how many times this is. He finally gets the truck backed up, but not without a few casualties. Chris has now surpassed Bryce's time. Come on, do hustle. He's in oh. gear. Got it. Yeah, buddy. Okay, he's there. Chris's 24-minute time puts him dead last. There's four people going, and one person's for the lowest time is going to be booted out. And when your times are last, there is a kind of a stress going on in your head going, wow, man, you know what, I might be next. Reality's setting in. With three competitors done, Chris is in last place. Now it's Amy's time to fight for her right to move on. Go! watched these three guys and even though like I just sucked at backing I was like oh I have plenty of time to do this so I just need to relax this is going to work out in my favor Who's oh, right? She yeah, is dead center if she can back this up straight Amy nails it on the first try My backing wasn't great but it was faster than Bryce and Chris so I'm psyched. Yeah, Amy, come on! Crack that bell, Amy! You got it! The landing gear is down, and Amy is cruising through this task. I saw her take off, man. She was like a bullet. I'm gone, man. Put me on a plane, adios. Use your leg! Amy has run into a snag with the locking pin. It doesn't want to budge. Ah! I started pulling on it, and I was like, wow, this is not going to be good. Like, I only have so much strength. Ah! It was heartbreaking to watch Amy. She had done great backing the truck up. I think where Amy went wrong with the pin is that she kept yanking it instead of just doing a nice, solid, strong pull and pulling it out. Let, let's see if she it was horrible to watch Amy struggle so much. It was just excruciating. Now push with your legs. I'm push. Unfortunately, Amy's time has now gone longer than Chris's, and she still can't pull the pin. That's it. I mean, that was tough luck right there. It sucks. I'm sorry. You weren't tough enough. You're going home. Okay. You well. guys can say goodbye. <laughs> I'm pretty devastated that I'm not going to be around to experience the other jobs. I'm proud of myself. I played the game fairly and straight. I am not backstabbing, posturing. I just do my thing. But I've realized you, you can't do that in this competition. I felt bad. I mean, I really felt bad I seen her leave because there was a connection that happened. She didn't talk to me after we separated. She wouldn't even make eye contact with me. So I knew she was mad. But, you know, I can only base my judgments based upon what I've seen. And she wasn't doing a good job and wasn't listening. All right, listen up. Chris, you dodged a bullet on this one. Everybody, come on, on to the next job. We're heading south. From this experience, I'm going to just keep pushing, keep taking the chances, because, boy, it feels good.